The Great Search brought to you by Digikey and Adafruit. Thank you so much, Digikey. This is when Lady Ages are powers of engineering every single week to help you find the things that you're looking for because it is a part drought. And Lady Ada is an oasis of information that'll quench your search. See what I did there? That quench your thirst. search. Sounds like thirst. Yeah. Okay. What is uh, you the should great... really go into marketing. I uh, I might one day. Yeah. We can all dream. What is uh, the great search this week? Okay. Ada? Um, this week it's another customer request. Somebody asked us. About it was well, it's a request that started a, th a thought process. So somebody asked us like, "Oh, can you make a little adapter that would take um, like AAA or AA battery pack and convert it to USB C, and so you could like plug it in to uh, something that wants USB C because we have a lot of stuff that uses USB." And on one hand, it's like you know, it's kind of like the easiest problem and also the hardest problem because you know, battery voltage, alkaline battery voltage can range quite a bit. And um, especially if you have like four batteries, it can go above five volts or below. And so, you know, the right thing to use is a buck boost converter. And um, so I was thinking about like, okay, you know, I, we already stuck a buck boost and they could probably use that, but it's, it's not cheap. You know, they're, they're like, you know, 15 to $20 to have a good buck, uh, buck boost converter. And also, um, you know, they're more delicate. You know, just like you, you can break it. Um, you know, they have some limitations. They're not, you know, they're good chips and everything. Like, don't get me wrong. But I was thinking, like, ah, would be, you know, what would be an easier way of accomplishing that um, and maybe do it in a little more inexpensive way? And then I remembered that we did um, an ion NPI on e-fuses. And e-fuses are um, an interesting chip that kind of takes care of your power supply issues. It's, you know, people are used to PTC fuses or just wire fuses where, you know, if the current goes over, it'll pop. Um, same with PTC fuses, it'll it'll open the circuit so you don't get uh, too much current. But what if, um, you know, you want uh, something that's a little bit more, you know, you're willing to spend a little bit more, but you want it to do a little bit more than just over current, like under voltage, over voltage. Um, you maybe like light up something or warn you or latch when there's a failure. Um, and so e-fuses do that. So let's go to the computer and I'll, I'll show off. We did cover e-fuses. So this is, you know, I, I referenced this ion MPI, um, you know, about a half a year ago. And, uh, the, you know, I, I wanted to, um, if you are more interested in more details. And what's funny is this is a part, I was like, as I was like doing the search for e-fuses, I was like, this part will sound so familiar. And it's like, oh yeah, I did an ion MPI on it. But I'll show you that a different uh, e-fuse as well. Um, so this this uh, series is quite good. Um, there's there's like seriously nothing wrong with it. But um, from what I could tell, I think these fuses were only no, they did have a five volt one, the NIST six three five one. Um, but there were a couple things that I noticed uh, about these. So let's look at the NIST six three five one. To maybe um, make another option. Okay, so one, um, I think I remember now what it was. So this was a three amp fuse, which is which is totally fine. Um, but I also I wanted to see if I could find one that had um, a higher range. And I think also, let's look at the data sheet. Um, yeah, this had. You know, it's not super high, but it does have an 85 milliohm RDS on, so it's it's not it's not low. Um, that said, this was a, you know this was a very good option, so I, I did look for this. But I was also like, oh, I want to see what what other parts are available. Um, although this was this is a pretty good one. So, uh, right. So let's go back here. So what I did is, um, you know, I just basically because I was like, oh, I already know a part that's similar. Um, let's look at active e-fuses and see what else is going on. So I did want this to uh, range from, again, about like 4 volts to 6 volts in, and it would kind of give me a fuse at about 5 volts output. And 5 volts output is a really common um, voltage. But let's try uh, selecting on the input to start. And, you know, I think I can go up to like 4.5 volts input, you know, something like that. That would be 
four AA batteries because if it's four um, alkalines, you'll get like seven-ish volts. And if it's uh, four nickel metal hydrides, you'll get about 4.8. So, so that's good. So let's search for that. And we got a lot of options. And um, another thing I wanted to do, there's, there's, so there, there's a lot of options. So there's a lot of makers of e-fuses. Uh, so I would recommend um, looking for all of them. Uh, most of them have pretty high currents. Um, the only issue I had is a lot of them, and ones that I've used before, like I've used some of the, the TPS, um, they're out of stock. And they're like heckin' out of stock. Like, I can see when this one might come back into stock, but a lot of them like they won't even tell you or it's like five years from now so i wanted to look for only ones that are in stock right now and uh, the ones that are in stock right now um you know i sorted by price and um the nist one is is in there there's also this one from st but i i honestly got a little bit uh freaked out by the flip chip because it's a one millimeter by one millimeter component and I'm like, I, I don't really want to live, I don't want to deal with a component that's that difficult to, to pick in place. Um, so I, I looked around and actually found the, the TCKE um, series and actually had a couple of nice um, options, which made it interesting. Well, first off, there's a five amp current. There's a wide input voltage range. Um, this is the data sheet. So they have an overclamp voltage, so it's like, you know, you could feed it 7 volts and it'll clamp it down for you. Obviously, you know, you can't do it too much or it'll overheat. But, um, you know, it, it, will, it, will, it will keep the voltage um, active. Like, you'll, you'll be able to get voltage out even if it's a little high. Because, like, when you first turn on alkaline, you know, when you first plug in alkalines, four of them, you're going to get, like, 7-ish volts. Um, so this will just kind of cut it down to, to 6 volts for you. And um, it was quite simple. It has like a rise time um, capacitor set. It has a resistor for the limit. And um, the only thing that wasn't as nice as the NIST one is that it, um, you needed to add a external, hold on, external uh, FET for reverse current blocking. Um, you know, these are pretty inexpensive, so it's, you know, you can get a FET for like five cents. So I, I thought it was still, uh, well within reason. Um, but, uh, I kind of like this and yeah, there's, there's a, uh, hysteresis on the UV low. Um, so, you know, basically for 4.1 volts, it'll turn back on and it'll turn off a little bit less than that, like 3.8. So this could be a good option for like, you know, a buck boost is the right thing to do when you want to get, you know, perfect five volts out to your device. But, you know, if you're powering, um, you know, like a cutie pie board or something and you're like, look, you know, I want, I just need something about four to four to six volts in and I'm, I'm okay with it being a little bit um, wiggly in exchange for the price because, you know, the cost of these is, um, e-fuses is going to be, you know, 60, 70 cents, which is a lot, you know, there's no inductor um, compared to a buck boost or two inductors. Um, there's no complexity, no big capacitors. Um, you know, it's, it's really just a, it's a safe pass through. So this can be an interesting option. You know, you have a battery port on one side and then a USB connector on the other. And then, you know, it basically just gives you like a rough voltage out. And I think as long as people are aware of that, I think it could still be an interesting breakout board. So um, this is the chip I, uh, I selected for the project, the TCKE series, the 805, that's a 5-volt output e-fuse. And that's a great search.